Ulman, I want first to thank the Ulman Dynamics for this opportunity to present my research work. I'm a professor at the University of Iceland, and my uh, research field is vibration, vibration measurements, and uh, modeling and optimization. My passion is sailing. So when I can combine my passion and my interest in, in research, then I'm feeling good. There is a picture where I was sailing from France to Iceland in a, the wind was 25, 30 knots, and but the boat speed was only six, eight knots. So it was not so much vibration or impact load uh, in this case. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is my research or measurements when we are when I'm trying to see the effect of the hulls on the impact load on board ships a boat. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is a project that uh, I'm working on, and what I'm going to present today is only the first step, the first case study. It's okay. Uh, I've got some. It's okay. I, I've got some guidelines where I can stand or where I cannot stand. <laughs> Sorry, but when I'm teaching or presenting my work, I always walk around, so I'm a little stiff here today. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, as you see, that uh, uh, the, the the aim of this project is to find what the hull effects is on on the impact or load on board the high high speed marine vessels, and uh, therefore we are not measuring the vibration or the impact on the crew, we are vi measuring it on in the boat. So we are measuring in the cockpit and in the both in this case. Uh, as we know, the human body is a mechanical system. So it is very important. That is the motivation of this research, is the, the, the load on the human body. And uh, vibration and impact load is uh, very dangerous. <laughs> I nearly walked there. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so, so there is a. It's very dangerous because it's only if it's very high load, then then it can damage your uh, backbone or spine and and or joints. Al also, if it is not high and you don't feel anything, but are in a long time in a. Uh, area w where you have vibration impact load, it can uh, damage your backbone and, and spine and, and, and joints. That is, also you don't find anything. Therefore, that's the motivation of this research. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, measuring the vibration on board and I'm uh, comparing it to some uh, hazard zone. And I'm using the ISO 2631 standard as a, as a uh, rule for what, what I'm, I'm comparing. And that says that the root mean square limits of acceleration shall not be higher than uh, 2.8 meters per second, square seconds, or 0.28 gigs. And for 10 minutes, it's only 0.56 gigs. So, but what does that mean? What does these mean? You know that in our smartphones today, we all have accelerometers, and we have a three axis accelerometers. And I want to show you what this means. What is one G? That's a hazard, oops, that's a hazard zone. And if you look at my hand, how it moves, it is how fast the speed changes. This is a speed that we, what we can have in boat. This is more than one G. I, if you look at, oops, here you see this is from the phone, and you see it's from uh, minus twenty meters per se uh, square second to ten. The difference is the, the gravi gravitational uh, forces. So this. This is similar as I was doing. So this is the speed that is a hazard zone. So it's not much that the human body can withstand. But this is the motivation for the work and what 
uh, we have been doing is to measure different hurls, and we are going to uh, do more uh, measurements, but I'm going to present for you two boats. And sure, uh, this is uh, financed by Rap Rapnar, and I'm comparing Rapnar hull to uh, other hulls. And in this case, I'm presenting results where I'm comparing the measurements for V hull. It's two boats, similar uh, size, similar weight, and uh, it's a similar uh, center of gravity. So it's a similar boat. And what we did in this research is we did sail the, the two boats in a uh, weather condition where it was uh, 15 to 20 knots, gust to 30 knots. The sea wave was uh, 1 0.75 to 1.5 meters. And we did sail against the wind and sea waves and back again. And you see there is the, the green is the Rapnar hull, the green line, and the red one is the V hull. And the green arrows there are the wind and sea direction. And these are the three routes, A, B, and C, that we measured the uh, accel acceleration or impact load on the boat. And uh, as you see, the green is always closer to the open sea. So uh, if there is more wave on other boat than on the other boat, then it is on the Rapnar hulls. Uh, and uh, if you look at the measurements, these are the speeds we were sailing. You see, these are the A, B, and C sailing at different speed. And when we are measuring, it was between 20 and 25 knots. And that's a lot in these sea conditions. And I'm going to show you first overall acceleration, and then I'm going to look at some uh, vertical direction, acceleration in vertical direction. But first, here we see the overall. Uh, the, uh, there is the uh, limits for 10 minutes. Uh, and you see there, there's a lot of impacts that goes above that. So this is a, and more than one G, and that's a hazard zone. And, but we see the green is lower than the red, and there is a difference between these two hulls. That is, the Rapnar hull are showing less impact load, less vibration. And uh, if we look, this is a measurement at the cockpit. If we look at the measurement at the, at the bow, there is a more difference. So there is more pitch roll on the weak hull than the Rapnar hull. And y th this is a, there is a large difference. I'm not selling you a Rapnar hull. I'm, I'm just presenting measurement results from a measurement. So, so this, these are facts. And here we see the difference for an uh, area where the boat was close to the same speed. Sure, it is difficult to make a measurement where the speed is tot uh, the same. And what we did of this was we learned a lot. But here we see the green is the Rapnar hull, but the red, red one is the V, v hull. And we see there, uh, there is a difference. And uh, as you see, that there is a one at this measurement point, there is a one uh, acceleration over one G at the v, v hull. And here are some counting. We see that for the sailing route A, B, and C, there was, uh, for A and B, there was no, in the cockpit, there was no acceleration that was higher than 0.57 G in, at the, uh, in the Rapnar hull. But in uh, the uh, V hull, there was uh, uh, seven in the sailing group A, 26 in sailing group C, but there was a six, six acceleration peaks that was above the, the, the 0.57 G limits. So this, this shows the difference in the y direction or vertical direction. And here we see the difference at the bow. And sure, this affects the maneuverability of the boat because of this, this pitch roll of the wheel hull. And you see this blue line, the magnetic line is the wheel hull, and the blue line is the 
the Rapner Hall. And here is the difference, and you see there is a huge difference there between the peaks of these two, two boats. And also the root mean square mean value of the measurements, you see there, there's a lot of, of difference, difference there. So if I summarize the results, uh, the uh, there is a difference between these two boats. Uh, the limits, the 10-minute limits of 0.57 Gs was 33 peaks for the uh, Wee Hull, but only six for the Rapner Hull. And uh, at the bow, there was uh, 112 peaks for the Wee Hull. That was higher than 1 G, and only six for, for the Rapner Hull. And this shows also where the difference was in the in the acceleration. But I want to acknowledge uh, the Rapnar company for uh, supporting this and for arranging this and give me the opportunity to to combine my passion and my research. And sure, also I want to thank the Landsberg rescue team for taking being a part of this research. So so, but the next step in this will be. Uh, we will make a measurement plan and we will measure more hulls and we will com compare with different sea conditions, with different weather and sea conditions and direction. So that's finished my talk. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Uh, the Ratner Hulls is a secret. <laughs> no, uh, th there is a there is a special designed hull, and uh, there there is a the form of the hull, and it has a, 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 a it's a like a keel. And it's a it's a, it's a it's a different design, and it, it, it's a innovative design of a hull. So, but I I was not I didn't take a part of this design, or I've been a part of the. I'm only doing this research on measurements. Uh, uh, what frequency did I measure at? Uh, there is a, this peaks was a uh, RSM value for one, w one second, and it was uh, the standard, uh, it's a, it's a Dyna measurement tool, uh, is it 800 hertz, something like that. Yeah, I think I, it's RMS value for one, one second that I'm comparing here. But sure, what I will do next is I will show the movement of the boat in the sea and, and follow the boat. And we also, what we need to do also is that have a good measurement on the waves, both the, the wave heights and, and uh, length and so on. Uh, we, we, we did, uh, there was a, from a weather station close to where we were sailing, there was we didn't have uh, uh, measurements on boat, and and that's something we are going to change. More questions? Okay. No. Was a boat made of some composite materials? No, there was aluminium and and glass fiber. The the we held was aluminium. But the weight, the weight was the same, and the, and the center of gravity and so on. So there is a lot of things that we will do in the next measurements will change. But that's correct. It was a different type. Okay. Thank you.